Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to be looking at topics under the standard 2.2 in 8th grade and also topics under the study island lesson called exponents. If you're working in either of those two places, this is a great place to come and get some help. We are going to be, this is part two of two videos that go over those questions in the study island lesson exponents. And we're going to be looking at the problems where you are adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing numbers in scientific notation. So remember as you're going along, please be taking notes. They're only going to help you and it gives you a great resource to study from and look at later when you're trying these problems on your own. And if I go too fast, just pause and rewind the video at any point, and you can even pause the, at the beginning of a question. You can work that problem out and then watch the video, and that way you can get a gauge of what you're doing great and what you need some work on still. So I'm so glad that you're joining us, and let's go ahead and look at some notes. When you have numbers in scientific notation, and you're going to be adding and subtracting them, you're going to want to make sure that all the numbers are converted to the same power of 10. So the exponent that's on the 10, they has to be the same. And then you add or subtract the digit terms, the coefficient that's up front. So let's go ahead and look at examples using that rule. All right, so here I'm adding two numbers in scientific notation. So that means I need to get these powers to match, the 17 and the 15. I'm going to make this first one a 15, and so that means if I make this exponent a smaller, I'm going to have to make the coefficient here, the number up front, bigger. So I made the power smaller by 2, so that means I'm going to move my decimal here two places to make it bigger. I'm going to have to fill in a 0 there, and that's going to give me 220 times 10 to the 15th. And then plus, this one is already 10 to, the two, 10 to the 15th, so I'm just going to leave it the same. And then I go ahead and add the numbers out front. 220 plus 2 is 222. And then the times 10 to the 15th, that all stays the same. And now I have to go ahead and finish by putting this back into scientific notation. So the decimal is currently here. I need to move it so that it creates a number equal to or greater than 1 but less than 10. So I'm going to move it 1, 2. And since I need my number smaller by two decimal places, I'm going to make my exponent bigger by 2. So This is going to be 10 to the 17th. I'm going to have 2.22 out front times 10 to the 17th, and that makes my final answer B. This is another addition problem where I'm adding two scientific, two numbers in scientific notation. So that means I'm going to have to make my powers here match. So I'm going to take this 15 and I'm going to make it a 12. So, so since I'm decreasing the power by Three, I'm going to have to move this decimal here three spots to make the number bigger. The power is smaller, so the number gets bigger. So that means when I move it three times to the right, I'm going to have to add in two zeros. So then the 4.2 times 10 to the 12th power, that is already 12, so that at least stays the same so that they match. And then I'm going to add 2600 plus 4.2, and that's 26 or 2604 and two tenths, and that's times 10 to the 12th. And then I need to go ahead and move this so that it creates standard notation, which means I have to move this decimal enough places that it creates a number that's greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And so when I move it, the decimal to create 2.6042, I've moved it three decimal places. Since I made a bigger number smaller, this number here got smaller, that means my exponent's going to get bigger by three units. So it's going to be 10 to the 15th, which is going to make my final answer D. Now I'm subtracting, so this is going to work the exact same way. I'm 
only when I'm instead of adding the numbers up front, I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take, I have a negative 3 here and a negative 5 for my exponents. I'm going to make both of these negative 5. So since I'm making the exponent smaller by 2, I'm going to have to make this bigger by two decimal places. So I move it one, two, end up filling in a zero. And so it's going to be 660 times 10 to the negative fifth. Remember, this number gets bigger, this one gets smaller, or vice versa. It's going to be minus 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. So then I just subtract the numbers up front. 660 minus 1.2 is 658.8. That's going to be times 10 to the negative 5 power. And so then I have to move this decimal so that it creates scientific notation again. So I'm going to have to move it twice. I made my number smaller when I moved it create scientific notation. So I'm going to have to make this bigger by 2. So that means it's going to become 10 to the negative 3. And then the number out front is 6.588, which is bigger than 1, but less than 10. And that's going to be my final answer, which is B. This next problem reads, an environmental scientist estimated the number of drops of water in two different jugs. He estimated that the smaller jug has 204,000 drops of water and the larger jug contains 8,550,000 drops of water. What is the difference between the number of drops of water in the larger jug and the number of drops of water in the smaller jug? So the first thing I'm going to do is write these so that everything is lined up so that I can subtract them. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract these. When I do that, I get eight million three hundred and forty six thousand. And so then I just have to put this in scientific notation since all of my answers are in scientific notation. So right now my decimal is here at the end. and I need to move it so that I create a number bigger than one but less than ten. So I have to move one. Two, three, four, five, six, and eight point three four six is bigger than one but less than ten. So this is going to be eight point three four six times ten to the sixth power, which is going to make D my final answer. So when you're multiplying in scientific notation. It's a little bit easier. You're going to multiply the coefficients, so the numbers out front, and then you're going to use the properties of exponents, which means that when you're multiplying numbers with the same basis, so when these tens here are the same, you're going to go ahead and add those exponents. So here, 4 times 3 is 12, 3 plus 4 is 7, and then I have to make sure that my final answer is in scientific notation. 12 does not fit between 1 and 10, so I have to move the decimal, make the smaller number, which makes my exponent bigger, and that's my final answer. Let's go ahead and look at some more problems using that. So here I have two numbers being multiplied by that are both in scientific notation. So I'm going to multiply the coefficients, which is 7 times 9 is 63. And then I have times 10, and then I'm going to add the exponents on the top. So 7 plus a negative 2 is 5. And then I have to make sure that the my final answer is in scientific notation. So that means instead of having the decimal here at the end, I'm going to move it over 1 to make 6.3. And since I made, I went from a bigger number to a smaller number, this coefficient got smaller, so my exponent's going to get bigger. So it's going to be times 10 to the 6th for my exponent or power, which is going to make my final answer here in C. Here's another multiplication problem. 
Remember, when we have two numbers that are in scientific notation being multiplied, we're going to multiply both of the coefficients first. So 5 times 5 is 25, plus 10, or times 10 is going to stay. Then I have 5 and negative 4, and when I add those, that is 1. So then I just have to look to see what my final answer here, and to make sure it's in scientific notation. Right now my decimal is right here, I'm making 25, which is bigger than 10. So I'm going to move it over 1, and now 2.5 is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And because I went from a bigger number here and made it smaller, my power is going to do the opposite. It's going to get bigger by that one move, so now it's going to be 10 to the second, which is going to make A my final answer. Dividing numbers in scientific notation are very similar. You're going to divide the coefficients up front, and then you're going to use the properties of exponents to subtract your exponents. So here, 2 divided by 4 is a half, 0.5. And 7 minus 4 is 3, so there's a 3 there. And then you just simplify, or just go ahead and put the number back into scientific notation. So here, 0. 0.5 is less than 1, and we can't have that. It has to be greater than or equal to. So I move it over 1, making it the number now 5. And so my number is going to be bigger now. So that means my power is going to go down, and it goes down by that one decimal move. So here I have an example where we're dividing two numbers in scientific notation. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide the two coefficients, the numbers in the front. So I'm going to take 2.8 divided by 7 times 10. And then I have 8 and 3 as my powers. So I'm going to subtract those, and that's going to be 8 minus 3 is 5. 2.8 divided by 7 is 0 0.5, 0 0.4, excuse me, times 10 to the 5th. And so I just need to put my answer here back into scientific notation. 0 0.4 is smaller than 1, so it can't be greater than or equal to and less than 10. So I'm going to move it, the decimal over 1 to the right so that the, that creates 4, which is between 1 and 10. And because I moved the decimal over once, it made a bigger number. I'm going to go ahead and move down my index by 1 and make a smaller number, which is 4. And that's going to make D my final answer for number 7. So in this question, you're once again dividing two numbers in scientific notation. So that means you're going to have 3 divided by 6, which is the same as 1 half, which is 0.5 as a decimal, times 10 to the and then your index here is 8 and 3. You're going to subtract those. 8 minus 3 is 5. And so now I'm going to have to go ahead and make sure this is in scientific notation. 0. 0.5 is not between 1 and 10. So I'm going to have to go ahead and move this once decimal to the left. And because I moved this decimal in a way that made the number bigger, I'm going to have to make the index smaller because they work opposite. So this is actually going to be 10 to the 4th. So I'm going to have 5 times 10 to the 4th, which is C. This last problem, they give us a table, and they want us to list these numbers from greatest to least. Well, in order to do that, to compare them, I'm going to have to have the indexes, the exponents here, to be all the same number. So I'm going to go ahead and move this negative 8 exponent and make it a negative 7. So these negative 8s are going to be increased by 1 to get to the negative 7. So that means I'm going to have to decrease these numbers by one decimal point. So decimal point is going to be moved to the beginning. So if I rewrite that, that's going to be 0 0.71 times 10 to the negative 7, and 0.85, or 85 hundredths, times 10 to the negative 7. And now I can compare them. Remember, it's greatest to least. So I'm looking at 2.2, 1 1.6, 0.71, and 0.85. The biggest number there 
is the 2.2, so that means potassium is going to be my biggest element. Then the next one down is 1.6, so silver. The next one down is 0.85, so boron. And then the smallest is 0.71, so aragon, which is going to make my final answer here B. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.